Farmery's Pioneer Harvest Stout from Farmery Estate Brewing in Nipawa, Manitoba. About an hour and a half from where I'm sitting. Very nice beer. So the subject of today's video intrigued me when I saw it. Take a look at that heat sink. Doesn't that just make you curious and make you uh, wonder what the hell's going on underneath there? It certainly did for me when I saw this thing. Um, this is power supply, a uh, DC to DC converter. Its input voltage is anywhere from 21 to 56 volts DC, and it puts out 5 amps positive supply at 21 amps, and 5 volts negative at 4 amps. That's a lot of current. This is just a curiosity-based teardown. So this thing is out of the multiplexer section or the multiplexer module that goes with an old Harris Farron microwave system. Um, it was from the MUX was called a, a DVT MUX and I can't remember whether this particular one's from a DVT 16 or DVT 45. Doesn't matter. Basically those are uh, multiplexing T1s into higher uh, higher rate um, signals either D several DS2s in the case of the DVT-16 or I think uh, DS3 in the case of the DVT-45. Possibly three DS3s. I can't remember. It's been, oh geez, probably 15 or 20 years since I last saw one of these things powered on. And that gives you some idea of how old they are. I would guess probably 80s is when these things were made. But maybe we'll find a... A date code on one of the chips in here or something so as i said the obvious feature of this thing is this massive freaking heat sink um got a couple of inductors there and a couple of uh capacitors of those 4070 at 80 also nichicon quality stuff um, we got some trimmers over here for adjusting the voltages i'm assuming uh, I'll take a quick peek at the front panel here focus so uh, we have test points, uh, plus and minus 5 volt rail test points, a disable switch. Um, now when this thing was in service, they were typically deployed in pairs. So if you wanted to measure the voltage on one of them, you had to temporarily disable the other one. That's what that's for. Um, that also tests the failover and stuff, although you kind of want to make sure that you trust it before you push that disable button because it will crash your thing if you don't trust uh, the other power supply and if it fails. Um, so we have a fault alarm, just a general alarm LED here and an overcurrent alarm. I don't know what the hell would draw more than 21 amps, presumably a short circuit. So uh, this goes into a card cage with the other multiplexer cards and its partner power supply. And you can see some pretty beefy tracks on there um, there's three of them that are three fingers wide and one on this side, it's three fingers wide, one's four fingers wide. And that one is, what's that? One, two, three, four, six, uh, wiper or fingers wide positions wide in the edge card connector. That's some pretty serious current going through there, but we kind of knew that. All right. All right. I'll get the screwdriver out and start popping this heat sink off so we can see what's actually going on underneath the hood. This, there's a whole bunch of screws going in here. I'm just going to pop them all out. Okay, hopefully those are loose enough. Yes, up it comes. I'll just tip all those screws. Well, actually, no, I'm not going to tip them out. I don't think. Oh, there's a fair bit of, there's some heat sink compound on there. It's a little bit dry. Oh, it still smears. And that's interesting. There's a big machined recess in there. That's for making room for this inductor here. It would be easier for you to see it if it was in focus. So, what do we have down there? 
There's a fair bit. Oh, what's rat? Oh, those ferrites that are rattling around. Okay. I'm surprised they're not uh, wax potted or something to keep them in place. Anyway, uh, what do we have in here? We've got more heat sinks that are on Q. They're labeled transistors of some description. Okay, well, not going to get to see what those are. This is interesting. Some of these chips, or some of these devices, are actually Harris's own silicon. Note the Harris logo there. And where did I see another one earlier? Oh, right. This guy up here. Uh, this this transistor here. It's also Harris's own. Harris used to do an awful lot of really high tech things back in the day. I mean, they still do. They're not they're not nearly the same company they were. They used to build um, oh like this microwave uh, radio equipment. They used to build uh, television radio broadcast transmitters bunch of different things if you look at their wikipedia page they've bought and they've bought and sold all kinds of divisions over the years now they seem to be focusing on military and uh, law enforcement and space exploration type electronics which is i guess where the big budgets big r d budgets are these days but there's not huge amounts going on on here i mean obviously there's a bunch of big power transistors um, a couple more trimmer pots over here. What are some of these? LM358 is what that is. LM339. Those are fairly common chips from back in the day. LM358. I thought that looked from it was a familiar number. It's a dual op amp. Okay. LM339. That's just a quad comparator. But I'm not seeing anything that's got a date code on it. What's this one? 9522. Is that a date code? Okay, that's newer than I thought. 1995. Okay. If that is, in fact, what that is. As I expected, those CNY17F3s, the six pin devices, are, in fact, optocouplers, which makes complete sense in a switching power supply. And there's a couple of them, one probably for each rail. Those are not unexpected in a switching power supply, especially one with transformer isolation, so that you have an isolated path back to the control chip to uh, keep track of what the output voltage is, so you can, uh, it sort of closes your feedback loop, right? So let's dig a little bit deeper in here. I have to take the back, this back shield off the board. And see if we can uh, get underneath here and get some of these heat sinks off and see what these big honking transistors are. This is solidly made. This is yeah, no glue holding this thing together. This is all screwed on. A very heavy duty. Where is that's probably the last one that's holding it there. maybe yes there it is so there is the shield behind it with an insulating paper so that nothing bad happens and there's the back side of the board wow that's some heavy heavy traces but again that's not really surprising given the currents that this thing promised it was dealing with what do i see here i see a couple of solder joints that are clearly not factory and somebody hasn't cleaned up the uh, the flux around them. So what are those? That is a couple windings to this little toroidal inductor here. Uh, specifically that one and that one there. Hmm. So this unit was repaired at least once in its lifetime by the looks of it. Unless that's a factory bodging or something, but I doubt it. And here's a couple more that look like they're aftermarket. What is that? I think it's this resistor right here. So it's either been repaired or reworked at some point. That's kind of interesting. I do want to get into a few of these guys that are hiding under the heat sinks. I'm getting into a 
bigger screwdriver to get in there. What happens when that comes off? Is that still glued down somewhat? Okay, so that's... Hmm. Oh yeah, there's another screw. So I can't lift that off. But the designation on the board, the designation on the board is CR, which tends to be a rectifier, even though it is a big honking three terminal device. Here's some more of them with the same designation and the same really heavy pins on them. Let's see, I'm gonna pop the, the uh, heat sink off one of those and see if I can take a peek at what the number is on it. Okay, let's see if I can find that guy now. Okay, this is this is interesting. It's a dual common cathode shot key rectifier. So it is in fact a diode. And it's not the uh, TO220 package that you often see. It's TO247, which is uh, just a bigger, higher power kind of a package. The 3045 is a maximum reverse voltage of 45 volts, a blocking of 45 volts, but an average forward rectified current of 30 amps. So that's, uh, and a peak current of 200 amps. That's just huge power handling. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, well, that, that makes a certain amount of sense. And it looks like there's a bunch of these guys scattered around the board. I'm just gonna check what's underneath what's underneath a few of these other heat sink blocks. Just for curiosity, because ah. Oh, can you read that? Not sure. I can't either. Might do some camera tricks and try and figure it out. So I guess to try and figure out a little bit of this circuit, that's the fuse holder. It's for GMT type fuse, which are common in telecom and uncommon anywhere else that I've seen. Um, I think I showed you those in another video where I was tearing down another telecom type power supply. Um, actually, if you, at the end of this video, there'll be a link to a playlist, which will probably have that in it if you, if you care. But the fuse is going to be on the incoming, which is going to be this trace right here which means probably that these ev other heavy guys and actually this one on the back here and this one on the front here they're joined with plated holes plated through holes you can see that and so are these other heavy ones so i'm assuming then that on the back side here is probably going to be the other side of the incoming power supply and it's yeah it's going up there too so uh oh okay so it looks sort of like the positive voltage is there or the sorry the negative voltage because this is a negative supply um which means that positive of the incoming voltage is the ground I know it's, it's weird coming from most other industries, but that's how a lot of telecom gear works. Um, anyway, so this is just uh, two chokes in series, one with the ground and one with the hot. Um, this one looks like it's in series with probably the hot side here. And yeah, you can sort of see the trace. The hot side is going to see is going to the negative of these two capacitors, which makes sense. Those are the incoming capacitors. Okay. So wonder which one of these chips is actually con the controller for the power supply. I'm going to guess that there's probably two of them, one for the positive side and one for the negative side. Not sure. I'm going to have to do a little bit of research here, I think. 
Okay, I think I have found our uh, suspect here. I think this Vicor CS505B is probably the power supply, this power supply controller chip. Vicor is seems to be big in the DC to DC converter world, but I can't find the only place I can actually find a link to a data sheet is this one, and I'm not going to do that. They seem mostly these days to be doing uh, modules rather than discrete chips, but I'm sure they've probably got their own silicon on their boards. Um, anyway, that's uh, that's my best guess. And it kind of makes sense because there's two of them on the board. There's one there and there's one over there. And each one you can see has sort of its own section. This one has kind of this section of stuff here. This one has this kind of section of stuff here. So that, that sort of makes sense. So, okay. The, the more I think about this, the more it makes a certain amount of sense. So this is going to be the negative five volt supply, four amps out, because it'll, it's got, actually, why am I even guessing? This little capacitor is part of that one that is the negative supply. Oh. Okay, so that's the negative supply, that's the positive supply, that's the 2 amp supply, that's the, sorry, that's the, two, the 4 amp supply, that's the 20 amp supply on this side. If I was to just stop yakking and start just looking and thinking, I would probably have come up with a lot, and come up with this a lot faster. Oh well, so be it. Um, yeah, that was, as usual, that was just the, uh, a quick little me being curious about something that was hitting the trash at work. So I figured I'd uh, tear it apart. Don't know whether you guys are interested or not, but well, if you've made it this far, obviously you were a little bit interested. Thanks for watching. As always, um, if you've got any questions or comments uh, down in the comment section, I'll try and answer them. No guarantees, but uh, th there may be some things that I had to edit out of this video that I, that I discovered or whatever. Um, or maybe some of you guys uh, have worked on this stuff before. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching. Talk to you later.